This is a video podcast from the Canadian Centre for Architecture. The following is the second of three parts of the CCA's Urgency event, held for the first time in June 2007 with Rem Kuhlhaus and Peter Eisenman. Um, thank you. Uh, I can say that I agreed with 97% of what Rem said, uh, so I only have three minor quibbles which I should get out of the way uh, before I begin, because one is he gave me the positive approbation and title of a B-movie architect, and I really resent him now giving the B movie uh, to these uh, Johnny Come Latelys. And so I feel very badly to have lost my status as a B movie architect, number one. Uh, and I have to, you know, that's really something. I've gone around the world saying I'm just a B movie architect. The second is, of course, in all his erudition and uh, um, <laughs> generic talk, Rem is the picture of sophistication. So uh, he cleverly uh, does this idea of no sophistication. And now I'm stuck with looking sophisticated when I'm just a B-movie sophisticate. <laughs> so uh, you'll pardon me because I'm going to sound sophisticated, but I ain't, OK? Um, and the third point that I, I wanted to comment on before uh, I begin my talk was that um, I disagree with Rem at the only point, and that's the, three, the third percentage, and that is it is possible to refuse. Um, uh, there is a book coming out in Italy uh, which features a text called Eisenman's Refusal. So I would like to think that uh, given the status of my work, uh, that it is possible to refuse, and it is possible that clients uh, can judge the difference between refusal and, and acceptance. Uh, with that in mind, I would like to go uh, to my talk. First of all, um, to answer the question, I feel, even at my advanced age, no sense of urgency. Uh, I believe that urgency is the problem, that what we saw is the urgency uh, of media, the need for something new all the time, the need to be in the news all the time, as we see in uh, uh, yesterday's uh, New York Times. Uh, um, I don't have the image, but it's uh, similar, archi same architect, similar images to the second one that Rem showed. Um, and uh, I think that urgency uh, has its consequences. And what's interesting, I just read uh, the new uh, novel by Ian McEwan, which I recommend to you, a uh, very unsophisticated novel. Uh, you can read it in a few hours called On Chesil Bay Beach. Uh, and the last paragraph, uh, uh, I think I should just uh, read because I think it talks about um, uh, what I'm saying. He says, all she had needed was the certainty of his love and his reassurance that there was no hurry when a lifetime lay ahead of them. Love and patience, if only he had had them both at once, would surely have seen them both through. Uh, and then uh, he closes, um, there's another one, he said, instead he, he stood in the cold when he was unable uh, because he had hurried to her when she didn't want it. Uh, he stood in the cold and rigorous silence of the summer's dusk watching her hurry along the shore. So in the last paragraph, the notion 
of hurrying twice uh, was very important to a man who believes in slowness, Mr. McEwen. Uh, and I recommend any number of his books, certainly beginning with Atonement. However, slowness cannot be always the same. And we are in a moment in time where the slowness, slowness let's say, of a filmmaker like Robert Bresson no longer has any attraction to us, or the slowness of the filmmaker of Antonioni, uh, et cetera. Uh, and, but we can witness another form of slowness in a filmmaker like Michael Haneke, who has directed two brilliant films, uh, one uh, called Cachet, which means uh, hidden, and the second meaning code unknown. Both of them deal with the idea that meaning as an open and, and accessible fact is perhaps impossible today. And that the slowness of understanding meaning today, of being able to find meaning, is different than it had been in the early days of modern architecture, in the early days of postmodernism, or uh, particularly uh, today. I believe that we are in a moment that Edward Said in his last book calls the late style. Now, lateness is uh, a twofold word, and I don't want all of you young people in the audience to misinterpret what I want to say. Lateness may be about being old uh, and your one's own mortality, but it also may be the time that we uh, live in. And I believe that what Rem showed, and I agree with those images, uh, was the fact that we are in a late period and a, in a hurry to get out of it. And what Saeed says, let's not be in a hurry to get out of it. Uh, let's slow down and uh, look at the possibilities inherent in the idea of lateness. For me, what I call what Rem has showed whether it's the B architects or the A architects, is the death rattle of modernism, the modernism that still hasn't been replaced uh, by a new paradigm. And what we witness, we are in the Rococo phase of modern architecture. And of course, the uh, consummate Rococo figure is uh, Santiago Calatrava, who people like because in the same way they like Gothic architecture, it's sweet and easy. You don't have to think about it. You go in, you look at it once, uh, you say, wow, uh, and uh, what you realize in 300 years, not much happened in uh, Gothic architecture. It was always the same wow uh, and the same effect. And of course, I do resent someone spending $2 billion on a subway station that looks like a bird uh, in New York City when I have no idea why a subway station should either look like a bird or cost two billion dollars. Um, but that is neither here nor there. <laughs> um, I think that uh, the notion that Adorno talks about is that there is a difference in uh, the notion of lateness and late style in people like Beethoven, Mozart, uh, Theodore Adorno, etc. And again, I will quote from uh, Ian McEwen's uh, last book, this book, uh, talking about the same idea of lateness. Uh, and he says, they commanded with magisterial ease the full panoply of harmonic and dynamic effects and rich contrapuntal writing that typifies Mozart's late style. His D major quintet was never so sensitively rendered. And I believe that, uh, in a nutshell, says to me the notion of panoply of harmonic and dynamic effects, contrapuntal writing, is in fact what I am talking about. So perhaps uh, Ram and I will talk about the difference between uh, generic and the uh, contrapuntal dynamic. Um, I believe that we are in a moment where uh, the late style calls for the difficulty of reading, 
but reading nevertheless, that it calls for something other than one-liners, uh, and uh, it asks how in this moment in time, when we don't have a new paradigm, can we move uh, to uh, understand our discipline and our culture uh, in a different way. The one way that I have found uh, in my work is the notion of uh, partial figuration. Uh, moving from the diagram and the sterility of diagrams that became iconic, and I think that has been a, a big problem and misunderstood in architecture where the diagram begins to look like the building, uh, and the not notion of the indexical diagram, which is all about process, I believe there's a need to return to figuration, not necessarily icon, but figuration, uh, but not full-blown figuration, but partial figures, figures that are, can be misunderstood as aspects of ground or aspects of, of, of other figures, but that do not, in fact, uh, lead to necessary whole objects. And uh, I am uh, going to show a project which deals with both the difficulty of reading and the notion of the partial figure. And uh, of course, in the notion of partial figure and difficulty of reading comes the notion of affect. That is the physical and sensual idea of people in space. And without moving toward the phenomenological, which has always been the bugaboo, of architects who have been concerned with phenomenology. I think that some way we need to make people more in touch in the affective sense with their physical environments because after all, architecture is the one uh, discipline that brings the mind, the eye, the hand, and the physical being in into some sort of unitary condition. Therefore, I'm going to show a project today that was won in competition uh, uh, at Santiago de Compostela. And it was a project uh, called the City of Culture. It's a project that consists of six buildings, uh, an opera house, uh, two museums, two libraries, and a research center that, in fact, uh, <clears throat> was purposely portrayed to, in contradistinction to the Bilbao effect, in other words, in contradistinction to the icon that in fact took the energy out of the city and focused it on one building. This was an attempt to move the energy back into the city by uh, denying, as it were, a full-blown uh, iconicity. And the notion of the partial figure uh, in this project comes from the sense of uh, being related to the ground, that is, the, the idea of the figures coming out of the ground. Um, I see a computer here. Where, uh, what do I do now? Okay. Uh, and, and um, uh, you, do you want to do that? I don't mind you standing here. I, I feel quite good about that. Um, yeah, come on. What, what do I do for a pointer? Uh, what, what are you going to do? I can move this stuff for you. Okay. Can move this stuff for no, no. I, I can do that? Yeah. Just that? Okay. All right. Um, That's okay. Got it. <clears throat> um, this is the uh, city of culture. No. You see, uh, I didn't want that. Uh, I want to... Uh, you said if I push the mouse and press it, but I guess that's not true. Um, we knew that there was going to be a B movie in here. If you move the slide, only push the thing. Yeah, but I know I wanted to, to, to point to the slide. Yes, you're doing that already. Just oh, okay. I got it. I got it. I didn't realize that. Um, uh, these are four of the six buildings uh, a library, a uh, two libraries here, a museum, a research center here. Uh, the scale of the buildings um, uh, is, is quite large. Uh, it's about a 150,000 square meters underground. Uh, here is the cathedral downtown. 
uh, and um, a sports arena for 12,000 people so you can get the approximate size of these buildings. The, the whole notion was that they would be as if the hillside, we leveled the top of the hill, built the buildings, and then uh, restored the hillside. There are two buildings that have just started construction, which go here and here, the Opera House and another museum, which fill in uh, the teeth um, of, the, of the project. Over here, I should note, given that uh, John Haydick is one of the people in the uh, collection of the CCA, and I believe in a very important uh, figure who did refuse, by the way, uh, whose whole life was refusal. Uh, we built, uh, as I had promised him, uh, his uh, church without a body, uh, the two towers. And uh, if you stand over here looking through these two towers, it also frames the tower of the cathedrals downtown. So they were sited so that there is an axis between uh, John's uh, Catholicism and the Catholicism of Santiago, and he had written a book of poems uh, dedicated, as it were, to Santiago. Um, the first model that we made uh, for the competition was this. It was unlike any of the others in the competition, which were all uh, building-like. Uh, this was the ground, and we are faithfully building uh, this ground, uh, as uh, you can see. Uh, even using uh, local stone, which we had never done before. Uh, the diagram uh, of the structural systems uh, and the vectors that uh, both bring uh, the idea of the old city and the new geometric uh, uh, concerns uh, into play in the project. Um, the reading of the project uh, starts with these diagrams. Uh, the first diagram was we placed on the hillside the old uh, pilgrimage routes, and, and Santiago is the, uh, one of the central pilgrimage places in the world. Uh, and so the same uh, caminos that the pilgrims used for centuries, we placed on the hillside. Uh, next, we uh, took and uh, used the topography of the hillside to distort uh, the uh, existing Caminos. And then we took a vector analysis and ran a series of vectors through it. So we have the old city, the topography, and the computer vectors that produce uh, the final grain of the building. And down below, you can see uh, the Caminos and the buildings as they will appear. Here is the site plan. The two libraries here that you see, the Opera House, which is not yet started, uh, mu another museum uh, here, museum and research center with uh, the Caminos as they move through the project and down the hillside uh, to the town. Um, the project is scheduled for a substantial completion in 2009, which means that the project took uh, 10 years. There are uh, many, many different overlays, uh, complex overlays of, of, of Cartesian grids, of, of topological uh, and topographical uh, uh, energies that are, are all recorded in the building. So that the building is an overload of, of recording that is not supposed to be intelligible. In other words, you're not supposed to take it back to a single idea but represents fragments of, of many ideas that are constantly unfolding as you are uh, experiencing the buildings. <coughs> Here is the uh, museum that's uh, being built uh, from down in, in Santiago, and you can see the Hayduck Towers, which were quite enormous before uh, these uh, buildings uh, started to appear. And again, uh, the uh, museum, the end of the library, and the Hayduck Towers uh, from uh, downtown. The, uh, this is the museum that you were seeing from downtown, and this is the research center. Uh, and of course, these uh, facades are not accidental. They're, they are very 
uh, carefully worked out through plan, elevation, and section, uh, defining uh, the different levels of, of uh, geometries and history that we wanted to uh, record in the building. Uh, the front end, the plaza end of the, the museum building, uh, and all of this facade, is, uh, this roof facade, is being tiled in uh, local stone and beautifully done, uh, a quartzita stone uh, that gives the, 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 the structures a certain elegance and, and, and naturalness to their uh, non-natural behavior. Uh, the dislocating, the disjuncting of the buildings from nat normal expectations so that one is forced to think about uh, what they're doing like this, it was a prime uh, uh, motivation in our work. Here you can see this quartzita, this uh, mottled uh, stone uh, that will be on all of the roofs. This is the research center and looking back at the um, library. The interior uh, of the research center. And there you get an idea of the two buildings together and that's the whole idea of this thing that really expresses uh, what we really wanted. You see the Cartesian grid, uh, one uh, and a, a giant grid that runs through it. So there are several grids plus the Caminos, uh, the giant grid, the uh, uh, eight meter grid, um, and then the stone. So there, there are both of these. And don't forget there is this museum, this opera house that will go here to continue the role of this uh, in this direction and down uh, to the libraries, the missing piece. Uh, and up close of the uh, re re uh, research center, it's being built uh, incredibly well. Uh, very important uh, project for this northwest corner of Spain. Um, the interior space of the uh, research center. And here you have the, uh, the newspaper library and the research library next to each other with the Camino uh, running through. Um, and you see the uh, uh, stone on the roof. And, and of course, in here is where the uh, opera house is uh, going to go. Uh, the interior of the library, there's an upper level here, a very complex three level uh, uh, curtain wall uh, that we've developed. Um, the, the topographical lines uh, in the uh, ceiling um, giving a kind of poche where the grid runs into the topographical lines. Uh, and you see this play of the flowing lines against the, the Cartesian grid and then the flowing lines also being marked by, in three dimensions, by uh, the other uh, sectional uh, Cartesian grid. And then this is just removed. We were over here and then we come down and another level drops below. So there's a series of, of levels and section of space that uh, I think are, are quite, uh, you know, uh, interesting for uh, the lay person. Again, the um, uh, Emeroteca, the, the newspaper library and the uh, research library. Uh, the two different types of quartzita uh, the white and gray and the red, pinkish, brown on the roof uh, to distinguish the two. Uh, the way the stone is laid up with this delicate pattern uh, still within it. Uh, the interior from uh, that view. Uh, and here is the plan of that building and you can see the different grids, uh, the vectoral grids, the Cartesian grid, uh, 
the historic grids that move through it. Uh, so um, there, and of course, one is not expected to read it. Uh, one is expected to know there is a notational system, period. Uh, code unknown. There's the interior of the newspaper library. Um, <laughs> The view from the exterior, uh, looking at the Hayduck Towers and uh, the different uh, grids that uh, intersect the roof, the facades, etc. Uh, none of it is uh, uncalculated. Uh, it requires an enormous amount of attention. Uh, you cannot be leaving your desk too often and, and do things like this. Um, it, uh, you need a very tight uh, ship uh, to control this sort of thing. And the, finally, the, uh, the view of the uh, landscape, this hillside, that will be uh, the buildings on the site. Thank you very much.